Hello. In this installment of the resource editor tutorial, I'll talk to you about the list component. The list component seems relatively simple at first. It looks just like a container that contains a set of items. But really, it's a very different type of component in every possible way. Um, a container just uh, contains a set of uh, components right from here. So you can just dra drag components right into it. And it acts pretty much uh, as we've seen in the previous tutorials. A list, on the other hand, contains uh, data that can be arbitrary data, which is presented using a renderer component, which can be an arbitrary developer-defined component. This is pretty difficult to implement in the GUI builder. So instead, we provide some limitations where the data is either a string or a hash table. And the renderer is always a container that's uh, displayed as a renderer, and I'll show you how it works. Essentially, uh, the renderer we can just create using uh, simple uh, coding like this, and uh, creating a container, not a dialog or a form. It always has to be a container. And let's create the mo most simple renderer we can. Um, I'll just uh, set this as an icon, and I'll call this text. I'll remove the text here because this is an icon. Obviously, we don't want it to appear like that. And so they're aligned because the icon might be tall. I'll just uh, center align them. Uh, right now, you don't see it, but it, this is just an icon and a label. Very simple. Now, let's go back here and define the renderer. That's pretty easy. It's, as you can see, it's here by default because this is the only container type I have. The others are forms, so they don't appear here. Now, this is, uh, as you can see, the data doesn't display properly. We've got, this is the data. It's just a set of strings. And the renderer doesn't really know how to show it. So it shows, it shows just the text right here. It doesn't really understand where it should should be. But if I add it, I have an, an option either to add a string or to add a hash table value. So the hash table value can be an icon. As you can see, I don't recognize that the intention of icon is to be an image. So you actually have to select image and say, I want this to act as an icon. And here I can select a text value and just type in uh, batters. And for the next entry, I can add um, something like, uh, let's see, what's the icon that I have available here? Uh, let's say uh, custards. Here we go. So custards. And uh, I can add any arbitrary data. I can add any row I want with any key I want, even stuff that doesn't appear in the renderer. It will work. It's just not necessarily of value. That, that's what I mean when I talk about arbitrary data. You can essentially put any form of data here, and it's up to the programmer to render it. So here we go, uh, fact based sources. And that's it. As you can see, it's updated immediately where we entered the data, which was just the hash table of da data, keys, and values. And uh, it was displayed by the renderer right here. So the renderer contains text and icon. And Lewis knows how to take both of these and unify them into one thing. Now, the cool thing is that a list can be displayed in any way we want. So for instance, I can uh, select to put the list um, at the south of the screen, for instance, at the bottom. And I want, and I can select its orientation to be horizontal. And suddenly, the list changes completely to a more carousel-like look. Now, as you can see, we don't really need the text here. So I can just change the way I render. And essentially, let's duplicate the renderer and call it, uh, say, carousel renderer. 
And here I don't want that label because that label is redundant. It might still be in the data. It might still be useful for me in the data. But I don't want to display it with the renderer right now. So I can just go here and change the renderer to be the carousel renderer. And that's it. That's pretty much what I'll get. The sort of carousel interface at the bottom of the screen where I can pick something uh, from a set of images. I can have a different renderer for the selected item. So if I want this item to be larger because it's selected right now, uh, or have a different background, I can, when changing the renderer, I can actually define it to a different class altogether, to a different container from here. I can have different uh, containers represent the selected and unselected, the, the even and odd entries. These are odd entries, these are even entries. And essentially create an iTunes-like pinstripe effect where one row has one color and another row has a different color by having different containers and then theming them differently. This is a remarkably elaborate uh, sort of um, container and uh, I highly recommend, uh, component, sorry, and I highly recommend you take a look at it and start playing with it and as, as you use it, you give the developers more power. It's obviously far more complex than the standard uh, label component sort of uh, structure. As you can see, I can just place things into the container and it just works. Um, but the list is a very powerful tool and very useful for developers. Uh, I'll try to talk about it some more in a future installment of the tutorial. Uh, until next time.